Okay, so now that you've just had a tapping session Thank you. Um, with Maria and she did a great job. Fantastic. Yeah, and so just tell us a little bit about what happened for you, um, what sort of scenario it was. Um, look, it started just looking at me having a habit of um, picking the skin and biting my fingers mm -hmm. and um, we did some tapping on that and then I said to her, oh look, she asked me what came up and I said, look, this doesn't seem to have anything to do with what we were talking about, but I've got this fear um, that's come from an incident when I was in my 20s mm -hmm. in this new office of people walking behind and I'm getting backache, headaches, going home terribly stressed. I followed up with work, had some counselling yesterday and yeah, that's come up. Mm -hmm. And so she asked me, what is the incident behind it? And I said, oh yeah, I've got an incident. She said, you don't have to tell me about it. Um, we can just tap on it and we did that and then she said what if this was a movie I said oh there's been a movie made mm -hmm. of the incident called Balabo but my incident was three or four years before that mm -hmm. and I'm really lucky to survive mm -hmm. and was that safe for you to be able to do it that way with the movie technique without having to talk I, about I it? I just felt it open, like as soon as I said that the movie was in my mind, like yes. she said, I said I got the movie, yes. it's always running in the background almost, yes. recently, in recent years since this movie was made. Mm -hmm. And then she led me through some time and said what? where are you and what's the scene mm -hmm. and I can't remember all the words she used, I do apologise, mm -hmm. but we tapped um, in the different places as she talked through and I talked about what happened, that the army trucks went through, one stopped, a general got out, we all froze in the back, I was the only woman. Um, and what you saw with the weapon? Oh, the, I'd never seen, and I had friends in the army, so I'd mm. seen big guns and all sorts of things, but I'd never seen um, it's like this mm. huge bayonets, and like I'm going, oh, I'm scared. Mm. <laughs> and the driver turned around, and this was, we did that first little bit, mm -hmm. and then we stopped, and then we stopped did it again with what the driver said to us came up, like, I'll handle it, you know, be quiet, like we were all frozen anyway, mm -hmm. I don't think I breathed for about half an hour, mm -hmm. and um, he said, hand over your money, and we all went, mm -hmm. if we don't have our passports, we're in trouble, and the general came up and spoke to him, and then walked along the track, and what we did is we stopped, I'm telling the story fast, but we stopped at each of these, yeah. like the driver, what it was like sitting in the back of the truck. And you said and then, he scared look on his face and, and yeah. you thought, well, if they're scared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> we, we know this. Yeah. And so he kept saying, driver, driver. In my head, I was had a mantra, driver, you handle it. We've got perfect faith in it, which we didn't have before. But now, you know, I think there are eight Westerners from all around the world in the back of the truck. Mm -hmm. um, young people, youngish people. So you were only 20 at the time? I would have been, yeah, maybe 21. Yeah. Just turned 21, mm -hmm. 20, 21. And so this memory's been in the background playing and in trauma in your body all those years? Well, what it's meant is I thought, this is traumatic, you've been unsafe. And one of the guys said to me, we'll watch your back while the other's saying, we could trade you because you're the woman. So there was all sorts of carry-on going in the back that I'm going. What? Yeah. Um, but I've always made sure I'm safe. Like here, I know that where the doors are, no one can walk behind me. There's only five people in the room. So I've lived a life that I know where the exits are. Mm. I know when something's getting a bit wild or a bit rough and I'll position myself mm -hmm. in a defence, yeah. semi-aggressive defence. So you have to have your own back. Yep, I've yeah. always covered my own back. Yeah. And so... I think the thing that's come out, I didn't realise how much tension. Mm. Like I said to her, when we finish, I just need to lie on the floor and have a sleep. And she said, oh, let's relax. Mm. I went, oh, <laughs> I don't know what that state is. Yeah. So that was 
amazing and also I found when I do talk about the story I don't I just tell a little bit you know mm. I, I don't there were things I said today that I've never said to anyone mm. I've never talked about the general walking along the truck looking and I tucked my hair back I made myself look like a boy mm. as much as I could and, and you said that you felt you know, like you tried to disappear and that you've always been had that feeling I've got to disappear whenever anything gets too violent or so, risky I kind of disappear yeah so now you've got a freedom to actually feel safe and visible that's right. Mm. Yeah. And you were saying that was relating to your work at the moment in the office, that you don't feel safe because people can walk behind you. Mm. And that people often say to you that you are, you are like you're invisible. So you feel a lot more present in your body yeah. and a lot more safe to be visible. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel what it's given me is choice. Yeah. Like I might still choose, but now I can choose. Mm. Because you feel safe in your energy. Yeah, not because I think someone's going to kill me, but I might just prefer not to be in the centre of a room, but I can choose and think, it's not because you're safe or you're not safe. Mm. You Do you know what I mean? It's feel opened up mm. something quite mm. big. And I noticed as you were going through it, you are saying, oh, I've never been able to speak about this before. Yeah. And now I feel safe to do that. And energetically, you look a lot more peaceful just being able to talk about the whole thing. Yeah, I can talk about it without the tension. Mm. Like I described it as, she asked me how my chest was, and I said it was like a screwed up towel. Yeah. And you, you know, you you're trying to wring the water out of it. Yeah, you said you've had a lot of bronchitis and chest problems too. In the three weeks I've been in this day, what I consider a dangerous position at work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when you think of that position at work now, does it still feel dangerous? Or do you still feel anything in your chest? Um, no, my chest isn't nearly as tight. Mm. Good. Yeah. So how's that going to be when you go back to work now? It's going to be really interesting. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like there'll be a lot more peace and freedom. Yeah. And uh, safety to be visible. Yeah. And I feel I can put the case to be moved, because I still would like to be moved from that position, in a much calmer way because mm -hmm. I get so anxious I snap at people. Yeah, you can't think properly when yeah. you're in a state of anxiety. And if they mm -hmm. don't get it, I get sort of intolerant. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, thank you for coming and allowing uh, the process of EFT to, <laughs> to give you that freedom and peace. Well, I love EFT and I've used it a lot, but I've never really used it in relation... I've used it in relation to fear of... Um, being stuck or fear of not being safe, but I've never done it with the actual incident running through my mind. Yes, and that's why it's so much easier when you're in a state like that with a trauma capsule where you don't feel safe to actually be there. It's so much easier to do when you've got a practitioner. I think you have to for something. Take you yeah. through that um, and, and having that ability to allow you to go to it safely. Mm. And I think because I have been tapping on the issues around it, that made it quite easy in a way to mm. go, oh, yeah, I'm willing to mm. take this to the next step. Yep. Yeah. So I want to thank you for giving me the invitation. Yeah, you. you're welcome. And it's, yeah. um, it's all part of the energy that we held here today. That yeah. To have things cleared. Mm. That's so, yeah. lovely. lovely. Look forward to having peace in your life. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Especially Maria. <laughs> Especially Maria. <laughs> Around this issue, because it's blown up in the last three weeks with us all moving to a new office, which I was really excited about, um, I thought, look, it's brought up things that aren't to do with the new office. I'll go and get some private counselling. And I went out to see someone that I had seen previously. And he, one of the things he was saying, I was thinking, I'm also looking at moving accommodation out of the city. Mm -hmm. And I've got a, a love of Philip Island. And this counsellor said to me, he said, you know, sometimes it's like this is how Vietnam vets behave. They want to go off somewhere in the wilderness, in the bush, or by the beach, and just live quietly. I said, that's what I want to do. <laughs> and it's funny coming here and this experience coming up, which 
it just seems like he picked up something mm. that I, I just went, I don't know why he's saying that, but it's all yeah. formed. So I just wanted to share that, given what you told me about your work and my interest in mm. working with the vets. And yeah. I've just recently been through the Philip Island... Vietnam, Museum. which I've avoided for yeah. oh, probably That's 20 amazing. years. amazing, you need tissues for that. Because <laughs> mm, yeah. I had a friend die in Vietnam, and mm. of course, you know, that was my age group, we were involved in all mm. the mm. And your experience and was actually in East Timor? Yeah, mm. before, oh, well it was just after the, well it was about while the Vietnam War was on, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. same time. Mm. Mm. So it was like a wartime experience. Yeah, it was a bit, yeah. For you, for you and the terror that you felt in your body. Yeah, but I didn't put that together. Mm. Didn't put that together. I knew it had always affected me, but I felt because no one knew where I was or what I was doing that I couldn't really mm. say anything. Mm -hmm. And I think I... I don't know whether I invalidate, but I just thought that's your experience that you can't really share with many people. Mm. You just make sure you live a good, safe life. Mm. But I've always had a passion for East Timor and I've always supported East Timorese events mm. and things. And when I heard about the journalist, I went, Yep, I'm so lucky. Mm. And I just wept. I just wept and wept. Mm. And I knew everything our government did was a lie, I have to say, on camera. I was so horrified mm -hmm. and um, yeah. And isn't it interesting that before you said um, you have always been invisible and normally you wouldn't want to be filmed because I would been not invisible. ever say this on a film. Yeah and now here you are feeling safe to be visible and say what you need and want to say mm -hmm. because we've just shifted the whole energy. Yeah. And, and also done some quantum EFT with that with you being able to step back in time and let that 21-year-old know that she is safe and she was going to be safe and tap, tap the terror out of her, letting her know that you're from the future coming back to let her know she is safe mm. and being able to do that as well. And I think the other thing that came out of it was I've never really acknowledged the, the stress, drama. the drama, you brought that That's up right. for me. And um, that, yeah, I know we were all affected because no one spoke for a long while. Mm. We probably drove another four hours before we got somewhere. Mm. Mm. So you were all still in that shop for that, that four hours, basically. I think there was visible. a bit of, gee, that was close. Gee, we're lucky. Yeah. Oh, my God, did you know there was all this? Mm. army in East Timor because you didn't see it in the villages because mm. it was still Portuguese mm -hmm. um, and I remember when you started the session you were talking about I could have died here and no one would have known no one would have even known no, no, they'd just known I'd gone for a two week trip to Timor but I was actually on the hinterland trying to get out to Europe on the hippie trail mm -hmm. mm. interesting so great that you've been able to speak about yeah, the whole thing yeah. and process it all and you know your, your whole energy looks completely different. Shame you didn't do a before and after picture. <laughs> <laughs> Next time just say, but then I would have said no I don't want to be on the movie thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't realise what you're holding to the let it go. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Thank and you. Thank you Maria oh. for being the therapist. Yes, thank you. Big thank, you. thank you. Mm. Well done.